So in today's section, I'm going to go for one of the important financial reporting standards. So that is IFRS 16. IFRS 16. It talks about leases. Leases. Now, the old standard that governs the leases happened to be IAS 17, which was cancelled. Cancelled in 2018 and replaced by the IFRS 16. Now, we look at these two standards in two different dimensions for you to get the critical understanding. But this standard is still exists, even though it has been cancelled. We still apply this standard level to explain the sections of this standard which have been cancelled and the sections of this standard which is still in position. So, I like that. So, leases. Yeah, simple means transfer of assets, transfer of assets, leases, no transfer of what? Asset or merchandise or piece of equipment by one person, bracket less all. So leases were a lease transaction or a contract, simple means transfer of assets from who? Lessor, that is the owner, to a lessee for a rental charges, for all a rental charges. So basically, that is the leases. That is the leases. That is the leases. Okay, now we can look at this. It's an agreement. So it's an agreement whereby the leaser conveys to the leasee the return for a rent, the right to use an asset. So you transfer the assets to the entity or you transfer just the right to use the assets, not the ownership. Because the lessor still remains what the owner of the asset. He then transfer the right to use the asset. So transfer of what right to use the asset, the right to use. You are only transferring the right to use. You are not transferring the entire asset. You are not transferring the two sections. You know. They have right to use an asset. That is the one. That is the control. <laughs> then we have two, the ownership. That is the form, the substance of a form. So anytime you transfer control, that means we have transferred the right to use the asset. That is why the lease should be accounted for. That's what the lease should be accounted for. Okay. Now let's look at the objective. So I'll list the items that I'll look at this under this section. Look for about five items. When I'm done with these five items, I think we are free to go. The five items they are objective and scope. Objective and scope. So, number one, the objective and what scope. So why IFR system is in existence. Number two, some terms. Those who I don't normally define them because if I define them now, when I reach their respective position, I have to define them again. It's an every standard term with some specific terms that we should know. And then we go to recognition. 
recognition and measurements. But here we have three issues. We have recognition. measurements and presentation. So recognition, I look at measurement and presentation. And presentation. Over here, we have very, like, concern about the presentation of the list asset. Why? Well, this asset, they only transfer the right to you. They've not transferred well, the ownership. So how you present the other asset should be a little bit different from this type of asset because you only probably have right to use it. You don't have right to own it unless it has been transferred to you, basically. Good. Then what we look at for is this. We look at for the big two. Number one, we have fit item as lazy accountant. Lazy accountant. And number six is Liso accountant. Liso accountant. Simple means lazy is the one going to rent the item or lease the item for longer period. So in his books, how should he account for it? Then we saw the owner of the item. What is his accounting <laughs> now? For financial reporting, mostly we look at the lazy accounting for financial reporting. But for corporate reporting or strategic business reporting, final level, look at both lazy accounting and what we saw. So for corporate accounting, we will go extra and look for resolve accounting. Good. Then finally, look at disclosure requirements. The disclosure requirements. Good. So disclosure requirements. So these are the sections that we are going to look at for, and probably we are done with IRA 16 with complex examples. Complex example. There's a particular item that we have to look at for. I normally call it the seal and then lease back transaction. Seal and lease back. So let's find a place and add it. So before the, okay, after the disclosure, so number eight, seal and lease back transaction. Let's add it to it. That's the items that we are going to look at for. Seal and all lease back transaction. Now let's get started again. The objective of this standard, the IFR system, you know, the objective of every standard is to prescribe for the correct accounting treatment of that standard. So the same thing over here. Check that this standard look further. So this standard sets out principles for recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure of all leases. That is all. So the objective of this standard is to give us what the principle for recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure of what leases. Now, to ensure that leases, sorry, the leases, the leases and then the leases, like it's the progression, the leases, Meaning, and then the resource, meaning buyers and sellers. The owners of these assets provide relevant information in a manner that faithfully represents those transactions. So, this is one of the substance of a form transaction. Good. And here, most of the reporters or the companies use here to manipulate the financial statements. So no wonder this standard is even going through an update or revision. Second, the I-17, the old one, there was some aspect that gives room for a judgment that you can, oh, look at it and then if you suit your reference, then record it that way. 
So as a result of that, many of the companies were treating it wrongly. So that's why we even canceled that standard and then issued IFRS 16. So, so that is the objective. What about the scope? Now, leases apply to all, in fact, the MPC apply this standard to all leases, including leases for right to use in assets. Even in sublet, you have leased the item from, let's say, anointed electricians. And then you have also sublet to another company. This standard will apply. However, it does not apply to the following items. Number one, leases to explore for use in minerals. So minerals, minerals, oil, natural gas, all those ones. So leases to what? Explore or use minerals, oil, natural gas, and then the other. Leases of biological assets. Leases of biological assets. Then service concession arrangement. The license of intellectual property. Okay, so basically, that is it. For the terms, I will explain them as and when they pop up. And then we can move on to the recognition of leases. Now, this recognition, let's say it's critical. If I don't know when I said that when the leases came in first. Okay, so let's look at the recognition of leases. How do you call leases? Now, leases, in fact, you have to record them in the books based on some conditions. Now, these conditions, it was different from the old standard, IA 17. So I'll take my time and provide the different differences between these two columns for you to get it clear for us. Okay. Now, I'll start with the new one first. I'll start with the new one first. That is under IFRS 16. Companies or entities should record lease if and only if the following conditions are in place. Or we are saying that this standard shall be applied to all leases except the following. Or a lease may elect an election. So, lease. So according to IFRA 16, Lizzie, who is Lizzie? The one going to use the asset. Good. Lizzie may, let me use capital, may. It is not like a compulsion. May not. So Lizzie may elect. May elect not to apply. So let's say may elect not to apply apply this standard to the following asset Good. to the following so let's take notes in other words i'll explain the actual meaning of this term Number one and number two, only two conditions. So number one, a short-term leases, short-term leases, short-term leases. Third example. So these are the what one year. These are within one year. Short-term leases. Then number two. Low value item leases that are the line asset have low value items. That is, I mean, low value item. 
and low value item. Now, the issue is this. Before I go to this, explain this one, the low value item, simple means item or asset that low value. However, the standard fail to tell us the amount. Why? They can't. Because this standard has been applied by a lot of countries. So if you set the quotation like okay, thousand dollars or thousand pounds, it might be immaterial in those countries, but in some country, it somebody's the whole year capital, long-term capital. So we don't have a specific amount. However, there are some items that we consider them as low value. So they give example, number one, computers, laptops, and personal tablets. So personal computers, tablets, all these items, the standard classify this as well, low value item. How do you get it? Mm -hmm. That is the recognition criteria or the recognition exemptions. Now, aside this, all leases should be on the balance sheet. These ones are for recognition or exemptions. So these items are not classified or they are not, they don't fall under IFRS 16. So the requirement of IFRS 16 does not cover this. That's not proper this one. That's also why we are saying that the LZE may elect not to apply the standard to this because this standard does not come out. Now, before I finalize the game, let me go further. Under the IEA 17, the one that we answer before we got the IFR system, that one, it gives you for two leases. I will come back to this further explanation so that we draw the difference between these two issues. So under IAS 17, we have what you call two types of leases. Number one, finance lease. And what? Operating lease. Good. Finance lease is for on the balance sheet. On the balance sheet. So on the balance sheet. Because on the balance sheet, all finance lease on the balance sheet. Then operating lease, they are called off the balance sheet. Off the balance sheet. They are not on the balance sheet. They are not on the balance sheet. Uh -huh. Now, in the IH17, when the transaction probably takes place, the standard gives some conditions or some circumstances that give rise right to finance risk. Here it says that when risk and reward, all risk and reward are incidentally transferred to the disease, that is a finance risk. So leases that you transfer the risk and reward, I think I have to break this one down, even though this does not exist in IFR system. Okay. Now under IA 17, it says this, that the lease is a finance lease if and only if the lease transfer the risk and reward to what? To the leasee. How? Let's see something. So according to IA 17, it is a finance lease and only finance lease that must be what appear on our balance sheet. So risk, if I transfer the risk and reward, risk means the lease is the one that will insure the asset. The lease is the one that will repair the assets, will maintain the asset. If the asset is idle, who will suffer? Like when COVID came, most of the assets were idle, right? Who will suffer in that idle period? If it's the lease, then it's a financial lease. So you will transfer risk 
if the lizzie have to spend the money to ensure repair and what maintain the asset that is you have transfer it number two transfer of reward reward simple means majority of the economic benefit flow toward the lizzie so anytime the majority of the economic benefit flow to the lizzie then the standard is saying that it's what a financial list let's see example you owe a building or a piece of asset that will last for let's say 20 years and then you have leased it for let's say 16 years hmm. so tell me who enjoy the benefits who enjoy the most of the economic benefits so the life of the asset is 20 years but this guy will enjoy this after how many years? 15 solid years. So that means in the old standard, reward is being transferred if and only if the lizard will use the asset more than half of the asset, more than one half of the asset is for life. That's the old IS 17. How we get it? So that is it. So risk and reward. You transfer it if the guy has to ensure the assets, maintain the assets. And in the ideal period of the asset, the guy will suffer. If you have some of these items, and then government imposes a law and inform me that, oh, all these assets don't work. If I don't want to suffer, then that is what a finance list Good. Then let's go to operating list. And an IS what? 17. Operating list, but I like that definition. You know, that definition, I like it. Let me define it for you. IS 17 defined operating list as what well. all these is other than finance list. So they are least other than what finance list. So it means that where risk and reward have not been transferred, that is what that's operating list. Now, this transfer. You know, operating lease, they are not on the balance sheet. Balance list is on what? The balance sheet. So let's see. Operating lease. In fact, they are not on the balance sheet. They are called off balance sheet. So companies can go and lease out assets. And when they come to the accounting system, Classify it under what operating list, and they were not reporting faithfully. How they do that? Yes, because they will do that because they're is saying this. Sana is giving some circumstances that suggest that it's what operating list or financial list when Rex and reward has been transferred. Even sometimes risk and what has been transferred, but still they will classify it under what operating list. Let the standard allow for waiting list treatment. So even if risks and reward have been transferred, they will still classify that under what operating list. And so they will find it difficult to know when risks have been transferred. For instance, you have an asset. The asset is like it's less than 10 years, and it's for let's say exactly five years or four years. How do you treat this? Exactly four years clear to be what operating list. But five years, will it be finance or operating list? How are you going to treat it? Good. Now, let me give you a particular example. Take airline companies. They were the ones that are using this standard, IA-17. Take their aircraft. Most of them are on lease basis. So they go and lease these expensive machines, this aircraft. Instead of them classifying that as our finance lease, because when they show the finance lease, finance lease and the, and the finance list and then and the operating list see something here and the finance list one you record assets two you record a liability number two a you record depreciation three uh, b you record Finance charge. Good. And the operating list one. 
no assets, no liability, only what? Expenses. So the least renter, the least what? The renter will be treated as what? As an administrative expenses. That is all. No other recognition again. So imagine, imagine. So companies, airline companies will go and lease this expensive aircraft. It's of them showing the fair value of the asset and then it corresponds to liability in their books. Do not do that. And then classify the rental charges as well as a mere expenses. Just valuing this standard, which in a way does not improve what the faithfulness of the account. How do you get it? Uh -huh. So they don't probably disclose the liability. So the highest one in the book and a classified and an operating list, and only the rental charges they disclose the books as well as an expense, which was very bad. So as a result of this, let's amend this standard. Good. Let's amend this standard. So now we amend this standard or cancel this one from the existence so that we break a new standard to come and correct this treatment. So the IFRS 16 is in to solve this problem. So IFRS 16 is in saying that, in fact, all leases must be on the balance sheet. All leases must be on the balance sheet, irrespective of whether risks have been transferred or what has been transferred by doing on the balance sheet. So that you will lease airline and come and tell us that this one is an operating lease. We will not give you the room to choose between operating lease and finance lease, no, not at all. When we gave you the room to select between lease and operate, finance lease and operating lease, you were hiding under operating lease. You were know, for finance lease. Because you don't want to showcase your liability. So, so IS or IFRS 16, it's saying this, all oh, leases must be on the financial position or balance sheet, except for one lease with short Term period. Why not just in? Is it for IFRS 16 or? It's for IFRS 16. Except for least with short term and then low value item. So, as a result of the manipulations of the IS 17, now IFRS 16 is saying that no, all these, and this apply to the leasing. Take note that this applies to what? Lizzie. This applies to who? Lizzie. It does not apply to the Lissor. Lissor also have IA17. That's why I said that there's one leg still in and one leg is out. Okay. So Lizzie simple means the person that rendering the item, he will now have to apply IFRS fully. But the owner, the owner is still applying operating list and finance list. So it does not mean that we cancel operating list and finance list like out of the game totally. No, it's still applicable to who? The, the list or the owner. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we are doing, we are doing what you call Lizzy accountant. How the Lizzy accountant in his book? According to the new standard, the Lizzy should only. In fact, it must account for all leases, irrespective of the year, whether risks have been transferred, whether the order has been transferred. It must account for what? all leases, except for those that have what? short term and low value. For the short term, within one year, low value, they've given us specific examples of items that have low value personal computers, tablets, and laptops. These are low value items. So if you like to go and lease out aircraft, you cannot classify it as low value. Even if you lease aircraft for let's say eight months, how do you treat it? Let's say two years. Two years 
call it five because not short. Now, eight months, you lease aircraft for eight months. Tell me how you're going to treat it. Good. But the value is very low, it's very high. Aircraft. Okay, this low value, how the Another big question for them. That probably I'm a tender it in. Now the low value, you are saying personal computers, right? And tablet. Let's do organizations like MTN that they are in your technology. So let's say now all the offices, they decided to go and then lease out equipment or a lease out tablets or computers. All the offices across the world. At least, or even a particular country. So they list about 500 tablets at the go. Compare the value now. Will it be a low value? Will it be a low value? Good. Now here they are saying in single, in single contract. So that is the question that I have for them. So basically, That is what we look at for. So that is a two different items. So that means you are now going to look look out for. So in lazy accounting, we don't have operating list any longer. How we get it? We don't have operating list. How we get it? So in Lizzie account, you only have a pretty list if this are there. That means the pretty list if it's what shorter, if it's what low value. That's the only period when the Lizzie, the Hara, will probably use what the operating list approach. I forget it. Probably the uh, Explain the treatment if we short them or low value because short them or low value don't appear on the balance sheet. But even if it appears on the balance sheet, you run away. For instance, you enter into the list within, let's say, January. You enter into the list. You put December, right? And this list takes eight months. So, probably around the last year of what? August, right? The last year of August, you pay the person, you transfer the asset back to the owner. So the same man, what are reporting would that still be there? Not at all. So it's not even appear on your balance sheet. Only between the January up to uh, January up to August, if I should prepare any financial statement, then it will appear there. Uh -huh. So you should take notes of this. Now I will probably look out for this particular item. The treatment. Of the operating list and then the finance list. So the operating list, we just expand the rental charges. You are not the rental charges over the life of the, the list. Yes, the list. Uh -huh. That is all. Now let's go to Lizzy accounting. How the Lizzy must account for the list. How the Lizzy must account for the list. So it's a lazy account. Lazy account. The lazy account. Okay. Let's see lazy account. These are the sections that we have to look at for. It's very important. So we said that the lazy accounting, for the lazy accounting, the treatment is slightly different from who the result. That means lazy uses what we call IFRS word 16, and then the result uses what. IAS 17. Uh -huh. So that's why I'm saying that one level of IAS 17 is still there because the resource still account for finance lease and what? Operating lease. And that is it. No finance, no operating lease. All this must be on what? On the balance sheet. 
except it has the word low value item. How do you see the difference between these two standards? That's why I normally start from IA17 before I gradually finish everything on IA17 and now keep in IA system. So let's see something here. The account treatment is like this. We have the initial treatment. The initial treatment. Well, the initial treatment. No, or the initial measurement. So initial initial measurements, initial measurement of lease assets. assets. Now, first day you enter into the lease, two things will happen. Number one, initially, you have to record what asset we refer to as right use. So right. Of use, so that's the name to back the asset. So on your balance sheet, the first day you enter into the lease agreement, record the word right of use, and that is the asset. B, there must be a liability. There must be a liability. So liability. So we call it lease obligation. Lease word obligation. That's the initial recording. Initial recording simple means the first time when you to the lease, the first day you sign the contract, start paying the money. How do you record it? That's the initial recording. We say initially, determine what or record right of use and then lease obligation. This is a liability. This is, and this is assets, basically. Okay. Now, this one has a value, how she stated it. So I'm going to list all the items. Mm -hmm. So the right of use of the asset, meaning the asset value, initially is being measured at cost, which compared to the following. No, if you buy asset, initially what would be the value? It must be at cost. cost. What are the composition of the cost? I just didn't have its own composition. I have for this one composition. Now, I have very system have also, also have its own composition. Let's look at this one. It's very important. Great. For examination bodies like ACCA, I'm very interested in the composition. And then the other professional body. Good. So, <laughs> the right of use in the bracket cost. It might be at what cost. So I look for the composition of this cost. Then when we are done, we we'll look for the subsequent treatment. The subsequent treatment is very important. We have initial treatment and what the subsequent. That is the reporting that what are you going to do? Uh -huh. And that's a recording of the list. So I'll do it step by step. So from the step one alone is the initial. Then I'll go to step two, subsequent. But before I go to the subsequent, let us look out for the composition of what? The cost. Initially, the right of use, it must be reported at what? At cost. What's the composition? It's very important. So let's look at that one. Let's look at that third one. So composition or the cost comprised of. Cost comprised of. Number one, the amount of initial measurement of the lease liability. I like that. Now, and this, please and please again. This is slightly different from what we were using in IA17. IA17 was just the fair value, the fair value of the asset, that's your no cost. But here we have changed that. We have been a lot of issues. Uh -huh. So the first is compound of number one. Number one is what? The amount of what? Initial measurement of the least liability. That's the present value of least liability. That is all. So that's the initial measurement. Initial measurement of least liability. Measurement of the least liability. The least liability. 
Can the examiner, this is the same as what? Present value of lease obligation. Lease obligation. Or present value of minimum lease payment. So present value of minimum, no shortcut in the exam. Lease payment. So that is that. Present. And that's the first item. So here we are saying that put all the payment, the rental charges, and find the present value. Please and please again. This section is very crucial. So that means the first item now will form part of the cost is what? The present value of what? Minimum lease payment. So find the present value. This is slightly different from what we used to do in IES was 17. Uh -huh. So this one, I will not even go to IES 17 at all. Okay, number two. So the top number of the following. Any list payment made before the commencement date. Any what? List payment made before the commencement date. Any list payment. This includes what? This includes like initial amount, right? Now, any lease payment made before the commencement date, less lease incentives received. B is very important. B is very important. And all of them are big questions on them. So I'll give you a critical section. Friends online, sorry, the other part is not coming. Mm -hmm. All of them, I'll give you critical examples. All of them have critical examples. So I have to do all of them to you. I hope you get the second point very well. The second point is saying that it must include any lease payment before, before the commencement date. So lease payment before the commencement date, less any lease incentives so payment so add any list lp meaning list payment no subscribe so list payment before before the commencement date mm -hmm. good less any list incentive so comma less what any lease incentive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that is it. So here, any lease incentive, enjoyment, let's take from what? The cost. So I'll pick a question where there's what? Enjoyment. And then you pick it from the cost. Let's go to the next item. That's one part of the cost. C. 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 C is any initial direct cost in paper the disease. Any what? Initial direct what? Cost incurred by who? The disease. Very important, Sahara. Any. So once they say any, they do not calculate any cost for you. For instance, installation cost. If lease a special plant, so when a plant came, you need to install the plant into your system, into your uh, your working environment. So this installation cost is a direct cost. So it must come out of what the initial cost of the assets. That powerful, extremely powerful. And then the last one, that's D. Let's go to the last one. Any costs which the lizard will incur for dismantling and removing the underlying assets or restoring the site at the end of the lease then very powerful. This cost is the one that's very stubborn in IA 16. Can also see it in 
I at the seven. Good. So any cost. So such as what? Dismantle cost. And then you can also have what you call dismantle cost and then the site restoration. Site restoration. So site or restoration. Or cost of removing the underlying assets. Cost of what? removing underlying assets. Well, this one is very strong one because it is the same as what the other cost that we saw under IA 16. So you have to find a present value. Usually, it's possible you get in the future. I don't find what the present value. Good. And I see a couple of important things. I've never said present on this before. Leases and services is much of us. Okay. So we are done with that entry. We said there must be what? List obligation with, and there must be right of use. And we specify the cost or how it might say that it might be comprised of the cost. We look at the composition of the cost. And then, okay. then we also said that it must be initial ability, right? Very much A and B. We've talked about the A, right? Let's go and talk about the P. How to get the initial liability, the initial list liability. He said that the first day you enter into the list, can you record what asset and can you record what liability? The asset must be at what cost. The cost comprises of four items. Number one, present value of the list liability. Number two, commencing and date. Perfect. Less any word, least incentive. Great. Number three, any initial direct cost, including was installation, testing, all those ones. Number four, dismantle cost and set restoration or cost of moving the asset. Fine. And let's go to the B, the one B. How you obtain was the initial measurement of the lease liability. Very important, extremely important, because these are the items that we need to get. So you have to have the initial amount. So here, in the examiner, we are picking the B, the one B. So how to get the initial lease obligation or the lease liability? How to get the initial lease obligation? In fact, in all, in getting the first answer or the first right figure. Is the most important thing. Why? Because if you get the cost of the asset correct, depreciation will be also correct. Follow that order. But if the test figure is wrong, forget about the depreciation and the next current amount. That's why we are much sent up on the initial value. Now, according to IFRS 16, at the commencement date, the lease liability shall be measured as what? The present value of the future lease payment. TV of what? Future lease payment. I like this one. Okay. So it tells us that it's the same as the point one. The point one. How do you get it? That is the point one. Or the first one for that of the cost. For the present value. So the lease obligation initially should be what the present value. So that means the the three items that we mentioned, B, C, and then D, should not be part of what the lease obligation. Now, let me go into it. We mentioned we mentioned that under the right of use, it was measured at what at cost, right? Fine, and we give four composition of the cost. The first one is what the present value of what the lease obligation or the lease payments. Uh -huh. That is the only liability. The rest should not be part. 
Okay. Now, let's continue the series. Let's continue the game. So, present value of the feature, that's A. B, it also includes any expected payment at the end of the list. Discounted at the interest rate, interest rate on the list. Good. So it also includes words. Any, any words expected. Any expected payment at the end of the list. Expected payment at the end of the list. At the end of the list. Okay, so stop. Discounted, that is lambda, is a PV. Discounted at what the interest rate, that is all. Okay, so now we are done. Left the subsequent measurement and then we start solving questions. That's all. When I do the subsequent measurement, I start solving questions. And that's the end of what the VG accountant. Look at this. Let's look at the subsequent measurement. Subsequent measurement. So subsequent measurement means at the end of the first reporting period and the subsequent ones have to the list. Will it still be at cost? Will it still be the obligation will still be at this? No, it will not be like that. We change. So let's see the changes. So subsequently, as measurement number one, two subsequent measurements. So this is measurement for one. Let's go to number two. That is mean subsequently. A, it talks about the assets. The assets should be depreciated. That determiner should be what? Depreciated. Should be depreciated. That the assets or the right of use should be what? Depreciated. The assets should be what? Depreciated. Over, over the shorter of the following, shorter of the least term compared to the shorter of the least term and the asset useful life. Asset what? Useful life. That's so. all. So if you want to cover the depreciation, maybe you list the assets and if after calculating, getting the right of use, you had what? Let's say 400,000. Dollars. Now, how do you depreciate this? Because right of you have to depreciate the assets. We say compared to item, the assets own useful life, and then the list term. Select what the shorter. Usually, so over the list term. So let's assume that the list term is let's say five years. Asset useful life is what ten years. What to be the depreciation value? Choose what the shorter. So five. Do you know why they selected the shorter? In fact, it's like this. In all case, if I use the list term, in all case, use the list term. Just let them use the list term. Because in all case, the shorter will be the list term. Can I give you an example? That in all case, the shorter will be what? The list term. In this case, the list term is what? Five. The answer useful life is what? Ten. So I'll use what? Five. Let me give us now two. The list term LT, let's say, is 20 years. The asset useful life, asset life is 50 years. Can this one happen? Can this happen? Can it ever happen? Tell me if it's true. The thing that means you're going to use it for five years at expiring day two. The asset will expire exactly 15 years' time from now. But you say you, you will use it for 20 years. Then you have you in fact you are paying extra five years to the owner where the asset is not in good shape or the, the, the life has a spike. 
So that's why I'm saying that this one roughly might not exist. Because if you know that the assets will last for 15, we live for years. Meanwhile, we've been living for just 11 years, or much more of 12 years. Because the asset last year, they will not give you a good performance. So no man will be willing to use asset while the trying date is over, or probably that fully expired. So as a result of this, I can tell you for the point blank that always probably going for the yeah, the short term. The short term because here yeah, I use it for 15, even though the lead term is for 20. Uh -huh. So take a note of that. So we are done with the A. Let's go to the B. So that means you need to find current amount. So please help this again. If you get any question, first I think I have to do is what? Set out your initial entry. Second, calculate your depreciation. Then after the depreciation, don't forget to find out your current amount. How do you get it? Don't forget to find out your current amount. It's very important. Okay, let's do something here. Let's go to treatment B. That's the liability section. Treatment B, liability section. Here, three things will happen. Three things. So I want to clean this section and then go to the liability. Second of all, in fact, I have always seen it that really help us because it has reduced the impact and then the note. So no operating is only finance is done. Now the B, I'll give you three items. Number one, there might be a finance charge. The interest, the interest should be charged to where the finance charge. So take note. Interest charges. Now the amount of the lease liability will be increased by what? The interest charges. So first, there will be interest. So number one, so B1, interest or charges. This will increase the lease liability. Which will charge what? Finance costs in your PL. Thank you. Number two, the liability should be break into two. Now, current liability and what? Current liability, that's all. So, we are done. On that note, I have what level is what? Question seven. Now, and the presentation. Now, the presentation is very key. Now, presentation. Now, these issues, because present them separately, presentation is very key. Now, present the right of use. the asset there. That one, we don't usually have issue. It's a liability. What if we want to hide it? You say, no, don't hide it. In as much as you are showcasing your asset to the whole world, then can also showcase your liability for them to know that, yes, you can get some liability before you can acquire this asset. So presentation is very key. How are you going to present them? So let's do the presentation. Presentation means on your financial position. So let me start with the right of use. A, the right of use. So the right of use, how are you going to present it? Yeah, it can be presented separately. So you can present it what? Separately as what? A line item among the non current assets, full stop. Among what? The non current assets. Line item among the non current assets. Or they can be included. They can be included in a PPE, but don't forget to disclose it in the notes. Have you seen it? Or you can include it in PPE. Property plant and equipment, you can include it. But don't forget to what? But it must be disclosed in a footnote. But it must be what disclosed. So that means if you hide it inside the PPE, don't forget to disclose it in the footnote. That's what I'm telling you. 
I'm now going to write to you the presentation. On the balance sheet, either you add it to your remaining asset or the component asset, the PPE, or you account for it separately. But if you add it to the PPE, don't forget to do what? Disclose it. Tell us. Yeah, that is part of them. Very fantastic. That Oh, the asset that we have there comprise of this. Don't forget. Let's go to the liability. Presentation of the liability. This liability should be it are presented separately from other liabilities or disclosed in the notes. Uh -huh. Or disclosed in the notes. Okay, I'll be getting. Now there's an important point I'm about to release. That point might be part of you. I think I've explained it before, but I'll put it again. Now for this liability, it should be either presented separately from the other entity or this tools. That is all. So tell us for this liability. <laughs> For the non current and current liability, B, presentation of lease liability. Present it separately. Why? Showcase your liability to us. This is what you want to showcase your asset. Don't hide it anywhere, please. If we, if we need to hide it, can it be sold it for, to us? Abigail. So here you are accounting for it separately and still disclosing it to us. But now this is very important. What people can now great. That's great. Now the least liability here. Account for it to separately and disclose it to us. So either you account for it separately. Or disclose it to us. We are done. Don't hide it anywhere. Even if I've added it, kindly disclose the know that okay, among the non care liability there, I have a list of ability of what? 40,000. So that's why you see balance sheets, list of abilities are separated. Okay. Now, very important. Have you seen I said that the list liability should be divided into two? Now, current liability and what? Current liability, list. Okay. So we are saying that presentation, the list liability, just present it on its own and disclose it to us. Don't add it to any of form of liability. So all the list liability should be what is closed on their own. They should not be added to any form of liability. Even if you add, kindly disclose, the disclosure is very important. So either you separate it that this might be liability. That's all. Yeah, then. Now I mentioned something in here that the least liability, you can break it down into what? No care liability and what? This is a very topical issue. In fact, the standard that's not provide the treatment. I have a resistance that's not also company to bring the risk liability to what non-current and what current never. However, according to best practice. So we get this current or non-current from where best practice, not as a requirement of what the IFR system. So take note of this. If you have to break it, especially one of the leases, is very challenging. So we look at all this. So that is a presentation. And then we'll pick our first question. Look at all. You know how I pick my questions? I start from small, small, and gradually enter into deeper waters. Uh -huh. So before we look at the question, the IFRS, we have recognition what exemption. Before I make a statement that all leases, according to IFR, all leases should be what? On the balance sheet, right? All leases must be on the balance. There's an exemption, except for if 
Delis is what low value and short like short term. Now the recognition, those low values, we call it the exemption, recognition or exemption. So we are saying that I very simply provide an optional exemption from full requirement of the standard for these two items, low value and short term. So the regime may, may elect, may elect to account or may probably will not apply the high power system to the low value and then the exempted item. As we've stated in summary, even if it's a secondhand vehicle and then there's heavy discount, thousand dollars and it's just bring sixty dollars, that does not make it worth a low value item. But the standard did not mention secondhand vehicles that were low value. You mentioned tablet and personal computers. I'll be getting good. So let's take notes of that. And we also said that the underlying asset qualified as a low value if the following two conditions are in place. Number one, the leasee can benefit from the use of the underlying assets. And number two, the underlying asset is not highly dependent on or highly interrelated with the other assets. That is the condition before the underlying asset is not highly dependent on or highly interrelated with other assets before we can say that now this asset is what it is a low value it does not depend on any other assets or at least can benefit from the use of the underlying asset so that is basically and then, in summary, the standard does not provide a monetary threshold like two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. No. However, it provides what item. So the items are number one: tablet, personal computer, and then small office pictures. That is all. Okay, so let's look at our examples. Illustration. So our first example, very basic. I took it from here. That is the IC and November 2019, question 2C. It's going for seven solid marks. Now, uh, a year before this, they did ask a jury question. Then I will read those questions out before this very one. Now, this is my first question. Let me do Good. It's saying that identify three key principles behind the accounting treatment for leases as required by what IFRS 16. Okay. As required by IFRS 16. Now, IFRS 16. Leases was issued in January 2016 and its effective accounting period beginning from on or after 1st January 2019. However, the early adoption is permitted. Good. To so the IFRS 15 revenue, revenue from construction contracts where customer is implemented also. But the revenue was due for. 1st January 2018. So you can adopt the IFRS, even though that the effective date was 1st January 2019. No, we did not adopt it there. We adopted it in 1st January 2018 because of the revenue. The revenue was having an early adoption than the that of the IFRS 16 releases. So what this will happen. This standard applies to all leases except those shorter than four funds and small assets. I mean, what is example stated? Small assets. It also brings traditional disclosure requirements for both leases and resorts. IFRS brings significant changes in those leases formally classified under what operating lease under IES 17 leases. The previous standard 
required. Identify three key principles behind the accounting treatment for lilies as required by our IFRS. So that means tell us the main principle that this new standard is telling us to do. Number one, for example, I've mentioned some. Now it has given us a new principle. So what are the key principles behind the IFRS 16? Right of use of the assets, which might be called to the present value of the minimum lease payment. At all costs, money goes like that. So that's the principle that we are looking for. Good. The right of use of the asset. Okay, so basically, the solution to this third examiner that the IFRS 16 gives principles on how leases should be recognized and measured. So, for instance, point number one lease assets to be depreciated as interest charges. So, lease assets to be what? Depreciated at what? So, my first point is this the principle number one all leases. Should be on the balance sheets except for our point of point number two. Point number two. The right to use or right of use must be initially measured at what? At cost. And subsequently, that is I'm not, and what subsequently depreciated over what shut out of what the least term and what the asset is your life. Okay, my point three I talk about least liability. Initially, the least liability must be recognized at what at the present value of what. The lease payment, that's all. So that is another point three. The lease liability should be at what the PV of what the lease payment. Point number four. The lease should be organized at what or maybe that amortized cost. Meaning that the finance cost should increase the lease liability. And I, I'm so happy when someone mentioned it on the platform that interest charges, it should increase what? The lease liability, that is all. And then the lease rental payment public will de decrease it. That is all. So that is the first solution for the question. Action for three points, for the max of three. So raise three strong points. Can raise more than four. Any principle at all that is lent under the IFRS 16, that's what the examiner is asking for. I'm done. Let me go to my next question. And next question. The next question will be. So the question says that is in accordance with IFRS 16, show with appropriate calculation the accounting entries required to record the transaction about in the financial statement of the year. For the year and then the page like in 2019. So I can really address some few points, the main issue. On August. On August 1st, 2018. August 1st, 2018. So, meanwhile, we are account for it 31st July. One of the financial statements are for. Tell us if our financial statements end at 31st July 2019, what is the starting point? 31st of July 2019. Wow. Wow, this is because November. Okay. What are the starting point of the financial statement? Any idea? So this one starts, it ends here, all you start from let's see some things. So this financial year starts from first August. So the next day of the next day of the previous year. 
20 words, 18. So no wonder the examiner mentioned first access 18. That means it's one year. That's the good news. As I was limited, entered into an agreement to acquire a motor vehicle. The terms of the agreement were that the vehicle will be leased for five years from the date of inception, subject to a deposit of what 19,972 and five annual payments of 6,500 in advance. Commencing on 1st August 2018. The fair value of the vehicle and the present value of the lease payment were 48,000. At the inception, the interest rate invested in the lease is 8%. Good. This is advanced. I don't normally do advances. So, I'll solve my own arrest. Then you do this one for me, advance. But I'll put the arrest first before the advance. Why? But there's something in the arrest. It's so straightforward, but in advance, in some way. I'm going to ask the student for a recommendation. I'm going to solve this question if the annual payment are made in what? Arrest first. When we are done, they do for what? The advance. I'll be getting this. I'll be not confused. That means I need to be fast. Okay, so I'm solving this question. I see this word in arrears. Arrears simply means the rental charges are paid at the end of what the year. So if you enter it in first August 2018, you pay it at the end. How do you know? Sometimes the examiner will not tell that this is arrears or this is advanced. He will use dates to check the dates, the date that the company entered into the lease transaction, and then the payment date, and then the payment term. Good. So I'll solve this question in arrears and advance. So, so that to explain my advance and then my arrears. So first, in summary, when I give you the question, summarize the items in the question. Let me summarize it here. So summary. First item on the list. Uh, the board is not that clear. Okay, let's summarize the question. So, some. First of all, first item that we have to look at for is this. They are saying that they entered into the list first August, so, right? First August 2018. Okay. And then to list motor vehicles for five years, initial deposit. So there's initial deposit. Initial deposit. How do you treat initial deposit? 19,972. Okay. And then, let's inform us that. There's a lease obligation or annual payment. Annual what? Payment. For here, for now, we are treating it in what? Arrears, not advance, as stated in the question. So let's look for arrears. So when I'm done, do the advance to just clear all issue. What level is the subsequent question? So the figure is. All the figures are in series. But let me write it again. Okay, so the payment is 6,500. And then the fair value versus present value of the lease payment happened to be 48,000 cents. And then it is for how many years? List them. Non cancelable list them. List them five years. That's all. How do you 
finish. First of all, there are can't be given this like this. In a financial statement, two financial statements need to be prepared. That's the financial report is so easy for interest. Because all the treatment or all the transactions need to reflect in a one, what goes to PL, two, what goes to financial position. That is all. So when they say list, what goes to PL, what goes to financial position, like that. Okay. So PL, number one. So for how many years? Five years, right? So do for all. So year one, let's say year two. Up towards year five, what goes in the first item? Depreciation. And depreciation does they don't know advance and arrears, but it respects time apportionment. If you enter into this transaction six months to the year end, depreciation for the first year must be what six months. If you enter into this transaction eight months to the year end, depreciation for the first year must be what eight months. But it does not respect whether the payment, the annual payment are made in what areas or advance. Depreciation does not respect that. So let's cover the total depreciation here. How do you depreciate the asset? You say pick the initial value. So the initial value of the asset we got 48,000. We call it right of use. Okay. So I'll list the items that need to be here. So we have now only two items. So the depreciation and what? Number two, your finance side, that's the interest. Balance sheets, three items that need to be good or to be recorded there, financial position. Three items. Number one, the current amount of the asset, we call it right of use. You have one, two, and then also up to year five. One, first item, tell us the right of use, please, and please again. Right of use. Don't call it PP. Don't call it this asset. But you can also call it lease plan. Commonly, you call it lease plan or lease asset. But now they say we should call it what? Right of what? Use. Because we have, they have transferred the right to the asset plan. Okay. That is the right of use. That's the current amount. So you can find the current amount C of the asset. The current amount of the asset, put it in. Items number two is the liability. Items number two, friends on the health this section is coming. Clear. Items number two. Items number two is what? First, liability. But liability, because of the best practices, create two columns, right? Current and what? Non current. So, we call non current liability, and I read there might be what? Lease obligation. So, lease what? Obligation. Again, there must be a current liability, and I read lease obligation again. So, lease obligation. So, in short, these are the items that must be. So, that's the template. First is the position, the most easiest of all, because that one does not need any terrible calculation. The only challenge that we have with that one is this. Where the examiner want to test you into detail, where they will give you all the other forms of the cost. You know, the cost made up of four items. Present value, any direct cost, any remover. Or if the, all those costs are there, that will make probably your computation of the be wrong. Because if the cost is wrong, forget about the decision, those will be wrong. So take note. But this question is our first question, so there's no issue like that. So depreciation. So 48,000 probably divided by that is uh, the asset, the shorter of the asset list them and then it's full life. But if they give us only one, just the list them. They didn't give us the asset, the asset life, right? So in in questions or now like that, just choose the one they give to you. They give us only one item. So the five years, right? Okay, so the station will be that examiner. The station will be 48,000 divided by what? Five years. That would be the depreciation. First thing you have to do, and write it for all the five years. 
So that is it. Now let me see how best I can do the calculation. So depreciation. 48,000 over 5. 48,000 over 5. So if my calculator will be correct, 48 over 5 9,000. So from year one up to the final year, the money was 9,600 correctly recorded. Correctly recorded. That's the first thing. Second, find the current amount of the assets. Very important. This one does not require any complex calculation. You know, if they are difficult accounting treatment, they must also be easy ones. Talk the easy ones. Leave the difficult one for the examiner. They will solve it in their math Yes. So easy, easy one, then you go to the, the past mark is not 99. So right of use. Let me calculate. So let's find the current amount. Calculate the current amount somewhere and then bring the answer in the financial statement. Or you can show workings in here that the right of use, so right the right of what use, we start with the cost of the assets, accumulated what depreciation, and finally current amount. Even though you can do this working somewhere, bring the answer in. Not that at a full financial statement approach, you cannot do this one on the financial statement. You do the workings and bring it in. But this one is an extra. That's why you are doing it here. So the cost of the asset is 48,200. 48,200 up to the final year. Issue. And then your accumulated depreciation. You no, know, just be compiling the accumulated depreciation over the period. We are tackling the easy, easy ones, not the difficult ones. So, same for the first year. So, I've noted this for the first year, so 9,600. Then, that of the second year will be, so the second year will be 19,200. And then you find the current amount C, then you put it in the books. So, 19,200. Then you calculate it. Now, this is the easiest section. We are done with the easiest section. We are going to start with the hard bit, the difficult section. So can we do this one for year one, year two, year three, afterwards, the final year? Some of the examiner might not require you to do all the years. So check the question carefully. For instance, the one that we are solving, the one that we are solving, they require us to look for the accounting treatment for the year and the first year alone. So this question that we are solving does not require the treatment of year two, year three, year four, year five. Take note. What they've not asked, don't go and do it for them. And their time is not there. Don't say that, oh, I can do it, so let me do it for them, no. To knock off any additional marks, not at all. So this examiner just asks for the first year, so it's like this. So these are the section that look out by the examiner. The rest are extra one I'm doing. Now we are now with the easiest one. Let's go towards the top. The top one are sections that require some little, little computation is number one, the finance cost. Then the liability section, have you seen? So finance cost and liability section are the areas that require little computation. Let's go do workings. I have to perform work is called movement in what liability. Let's do that one. Movement in liabilities. These figures I'll call for them. All these figures I'll call for them. So working, we have to call because of the liability session. Movement in liabilities. We call it movement in liability. No shortcut now the movement in liability it goes like this the ninth table you put a year here you put the balance at start here if it is arrears can you bring the interest with arrears bring the interest 
first. The anomaly rates up to time here. Then anomaly rate rent I charges but one to go there. So there's more option here. I only copy this section. I will clean that section if you have it so, so that I will take this section off. Because I need extra space. Subtotal rental payment and then closing balance. That the balance can down. Good. So this is how the table look like. This is for areas. This table is for who? Areas. When the payment are made in what areas? So as in 31st December or the last day. Even though this question originally it was in advance, but we are solving that areas first and do the advance. Clear these two. You know what I'm doing with this? I still have another illustration again that's in our next meeting. We'll have to That's something. So here, yeah, convert the years into one, two, three, four, and upward five. Up to five. The first year was the liability at the start. What, what was the present value of the minimum lease payment? 48,000. Less any initial payment. Is there an initial payment in the question? Yes, there was initial payment. Less the initial payment from it. The initial payment to be? We are doing our yes. Good. The initial payment to be? The initial payment happened to be that of uh, 19,972, right? Yeah. That was the initial payment. So let's take it off. So before you get the lambda at the end of the year, any initial payment must be what subtracted. So the 48,000 less 19,792 ought to be the balance left after the initial payment. Initial deposit will reduce the lambda at the start. If the present value of all the minimum list payment is 48,000, I'm giving you 19,972 already. Oh, and left the many So, can you do the post calculation? Put here 28,000 and 28. So, 28, 28. So, that is it. Okay. However, this does not affect the decision calculation. What are the interest rates implemented in, in this um, list? If not, so can you add the interest rate to the summary? What we have? Interest rate, the rate, interest rate in the list is what eight percent. So can you add eight percent to the summary? So if it's eight percent, then you see eight percent as the interest. So can you find eight percent of this figure? Let's put it in. So eight percent. Yes. Okay, so get something like 2242.24, but write 2242. So, what about the subtotal? This class is to get a subtotal. So, at the start of the year, you owe them this, and then the interest is just accumulated interest of 2242, and then you add back to this, and then you get this particular answer. Let me see if I can make it enough. Uh -huh, so then, uh, something like this. Okay. okay, so after adding it, we get 3270, so 3270. Then what's the rental payment? They pay 6,000 each year, right? At the end, so 6,000. So it'll be 6,500, good. So every year, so put that one in bracket. So every year, that one, I record it. Every year, 6,500. Every year, 6,500. 6,500. Every year. Please and please again. The examiner does not require for you to do all this calculation. I just want to show you how to be recorded for all the relevant years. It is um, can you look at the requirement. Consider the year in question before. Other than that, you can do what? It's not required. So, I don't that. That. so I don't get the the closing 
total is 3270. And we pay 6,500. We'll have 23,770. So that's the balance left for us to probably clear. Uh, so this balance will become the open balance for the next period. And you still charge your interest on it. The next amount, so get 191902. Again, you add, then you get a total, sub total. Okay, great. So if you add it to this, you get something like 25672. And you take 6,500 from it. One, one. That should give us something like one nine. So, go to my one nine one seven two. Uh, 19,172. So, one nine one seven two. One nine one seven two. And then basically, you find your interest on it and you move on. So, get something like one five three four. And after adding, you probably add to this again to mm -hmm. add the interest rate. Right? So two zero seven zero six. Then quickly we take six thousand five hundred from it as the rental charges. Fourteen. So something like fourteen two zero six. Okay. It continues to the end of the year. So it will continue for me, but I'll probably uh, end here. The final sum must be zero. Now, after this, how do you now record the items? This is the careful sections. Kindly take note of this, how we can translate this table onto the financial statements. Yes, how we can translate this table. Basically, what we can do is this. First of all, you have to record a finance cost. So all the interest becomes what? The finance cost. So here one, the finance cost will be 2,242. So the finance costs are wrote in the financial statement. Can you go there and put 2,242 in the finance cost for year one, year two, year three, year four, year five? Okay. Good. Now, what happened is this. If we try this question mm -hmm. to the end of the year, you might not get the why because this question Supposedly for advance, then we convert it towards IRS. It's because of the initial payment. Uh -huh. So you take note of that. It would be a typical IRS payment to get there. Don't in advance, you don't get. Please and please again, this section is very important. So all the finance costs, the finance costs are year one, we record this, year two, this, year three, in that order. Now let's go to the non-current and current liabilities. That is where my interest is. How to get the current and non-current liabilities. Now, it's very important. If you get this one, I'll be fine. I mean, this liability, that's the total liability at the end of the first year, which comprises of what? Because of best practices. Non-current liability and what? Current liability, which must be written to you. Non current and current. I repeat, the standard does not provide this. It's as a lot of what best practice. That they are saying that we should convert or we should break the two. The standard is saying that we should just record this liability. That is all we are done as a total liability at the end of what year one. But because of best practices, we say we should break it into two. Now, watch carefully how we should what we record it. Current liability version of what the non current liability version. Now you can only get a non current liability first. So if I can get this, then this is the difference between this and this. That is all. Okay. Now they are, I want to get from me. So what happened is this to get a non current liability, they are loose. And I'll start the rules carefully. He says this go to the next year, the balance left after the last repayment. I repeat, go to the next year. 
and pick the balance and pick the balance the balance left after the last repayment please it knows that go and pick a losing balance oh. is there the balance left after all the last repayment So that is the rule. So kindly take note of the rule. Oh, sorry. So sorry. So to get a non-care liability section, go to the next year, the balance left after the last repayment, right? Okay, so let me find for year one for you. Okay, so first online, yes. You will get the figure of the last year because this question originally was for advance. And we did alteration. And by four changes to what areas so different will be some figure there. And again, there was there was initial deposit. So as a lot of that will be good. So I'm just using it for areas purposes, illustration. Uh -huh. they'll be figure but I did the match be zero. So when you solve it originally. At the advanced level, and I'll do it final for you. Okay. So go to the next year. I mean, year what one? The next year will be year what two? What's the balance left after the last repayment? So repayment of okay, any year. What's the balance left after the repayment? That's 19172. So don't care about it is what? 19172. So in my balance sheet, the don't care about it. Can you put 19172 there? Under the, the balance sheet that we recorded, we recorded non current and current. So, under the non current first year, put what 19172. The proof of matter that I, I presented before I cleaned it, I decided to put it in. Okay. So, here I find it to be this. Now, number two, to find the current liability, let's go to current liability. To find the current liability. So, how to find the current liability? Then the examiner is the total liability less what the non-current liability. So is the difference between these two? The difference. That is all. So can you find the difference and then put them in for the year one? That means we will be equal to twenty-three thousand seven seven zero minus what nineteen one seven two. That is the first year. So the first year. Current liability. Is Good. Is the difference between the non-current liability and what? The current liability. This section is very important. I'm begging you. It's very important. So get it for me. If not because of the best prices, could have just recorded the total liability we are done. Good. Let me repeat the rule. Two. We are saying that this is the total liability, which need to be what? Split into two, market it into two, current and non-current. So non-current liability and what current liability. And we said that we can only find the non-current liability first. After finding the non-current liability, the difference between this and this becomes what the current liability. How do you find non-current liability? Rule number one. Go to the next year, the balance left after the last repayment. And it's what this guy defined. So oh, 19. So 19. Good. So for year one, this is the total liability, which must be demarcated into two. Or separated into two, or break into two. Or located between non-care liability and what care liability. The rule for non-care liability. They say go to the next year. This is the next year. Balance left after the last repayment. That is the, this is the figure. So that means it's 19172. Perfect. Then if this, let's say this one is X, plus this should give us this, then what should be X? The difference. So therefore, the current liability is a difference between the total liability and what? And on current liability, which is equal to 23,770 minus what? 19172. That is all. So can we fill the column? The proof of that we provided for the balance sheet, we provided non-current liability, please 
and then list obligation and I can't have it, there's a list obligation. Can you insert these figures? So you get an answer, then you put it in. Okay, I'm done for year one. Now let's go to year two. Okay, so basically in the second year, this becomes the total ability, which must be what? Total into two. So go to the next year, take the balance left, that becomes the long term liability, which is this. This one becomes long term liability in that of the second year. So the difference between this and this becomes what? The current mm -hmm. liability. Perfect. So it means that. Even though the examiner asks for year one, you need two years because of the non care liability. So this question, you have to do it up towards the second year because they ask for the first year. Uh -huh. If they ask for the third year, that you need year three and year four in that order. Okay. So can I fill in the empty spaces up to the end? I am done with what areas. I'm not going to start with what advanced. This is the original question. So original the question was more advanced. So right after advanced, then we are done for the first half, the level, the second half. That one we have to look for complicated question and then fill it back and then we saw accounting. And let's do something here. If you have any question, ask before we move on to the advanced. This is the arrays. That will go up to the end. I make sure that it's a requirement of the question before you do that. So you can insert this one in the proof format that I provided. And then you are done. Okay, let's go to advance. Please and please again. The advance for depreciation and the asset value, it will never change. The only item that will change for the advance is the Finance lease, the advance, the only item that will change is the finance cost. Number two, the non care liability calculation. Number three, the care liability. So when I ask the question, areas and advance, so the depreciation or no change is still the same. So if I should provide for this PNL in advance, after the exam, the depreciation is still what? 9,600 to the same up to the final year. Finance costs will change. And then when I go to the financial position, asset carrying amount, CA, will never change, it will be the same. The only item that will change is the non current liability and the current liability. Can you provide a pro forma for me? So, prepare a balance sheet for advance. And list all this item in it for me. So right here, right of this. So year one, year two, up to year five. Can you do the pro forma for me? Because after calculation, I'll have to insert the figures. Can you go to non-current liability, right? List what obligation. Then you go to current liability. Again, right list what obligation. So I went perform the calculation, come and put them in, and that is all. Okay, let's go to the table. If you have this, you can go to the table. So this one is list obligation. So this is a non current ability, a current ability. So let's go to the list obligation. Let's go to the movement in liability, the table. Areas, the table is different from what advanced. It will change. Okay, so I'll clean this one and prepare the table and ask you to come and then be putting the figures in again. So let's do something. This is advanced table. Advanced. When the payment are in what? Advanced. First, start with the year. This question I will talk to the end because it's an advanced question and might give me zero. Second, bring the balance draw down. That is the open balance of liability. Immediately, then bring the rental payment. Either the rental payment or the annual payment. Rental payment comes before the interest. Because you make the payment right at the start of the year. So
So it reduces the liability before they will charge the interest. It's an advance, not arrears. Arrears is you wait for the interest to be calculated before you pay. So take note of the difference. Arrears and what? Advance. So rental payment. Tell the examiner that if I take this one off from this, I'll pay what? Net balance. So net balance. So in arrears, we have subtotal. In advance, we have what? Net balance. Wow. That's very good. So net balance. Then tell the examiner, after the net balance, then the interest follow. Then the balance cover down. This one I'll do for all the five years. For you, so year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. But please, press online. Make sure to help me with the calculation. I make it fast, 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 fast. Make it fast, 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 fast. Okay. So first, here, what happened is this. The present value of the minimum list liability is 48,000. Okay. But there's initial deposit of, initial deposit of 19,972. We need to take it off. So you still have a balance of 28,028. Perfect. Then the rental payment, 6,500. You declare it off. So we call it at all level. How do you get it? We call it at all level. Like this. 6,500, 6,500, 6,500 for all the five years. This is advanced. Great. Now, what's the net balance? Let's go use the net balance. So, the net balance will be if I owe somebody 28, so 28,028, and I pay 6,500, and she'll have it around 21,000. And let me. Two one five two eight. That'll be the net balance. So the interest at rate was what eight percent. Don't forget and charge the eight percent in. So eight percent on this figure will give us one seven two two. Good. Then you look for the balance. Don't forget currency. Now this balance is a combination of this. Like this. So two, three, two, five, zero. Two, three, two, five, zero. And this balance becomes the open balance for the second year. So two, three, two, five, zero. And then I'll quickly pick off my 6,500 from it inside the interest. What would be the interest? Most examiners prefer advanced, like advanced questions, because advanced process issue and they're going to solve it right now. So let's have like 16,000, 16,750. Then we charge 8% on that value. Okay. Let's have like 1340. Then you add it. So I like that. So let's have like 1890. Then it becomes the open balance for the third year, 18097. Then you take up the balance, the rental payment from it. So less 6,500. Okay, 11,590. So 11,590. Again, you charge the interest, that's 8% on it, and then we're moving on. Okay, so get something like 927, then we add it. Again, to get a closing balance, so what to be the closing balance? Okay, so 12, 7, 12, 5, 1, 7. So 12, 5, 1, 7. That becomes 12, 5, 1, 7. And we took off 6,500 from it, and that should give us something like 6,017. So 6. The one seven. In fact, here I tell the examiner the interest, the final figure must be a balancing figure. So here should be six thousand five hundred. I don't get the interest that you get. 
That answer should be add to this. You get 6,500. Push it to 6,500. Get balance out. Interest out. Closing balance out. To fulfill the rule. You can look at the interest for me and let's see. I'll look at some technique. If you find the, this, the 8% on this end, you get 481. If you add this one to this, you get something like 6498. Which is not the same as what the 6500. So to avoid trouble, the last year, both arrears and advance, don't even worry yourself to do the calculation. Don't worry yourself. Just find the difference between this and this and put it there. But that's how much zero. You just find the difference. The difference, at least there's a difference of 0.2 or 2. It's as a result of for the running. Some of the figures were running. That is why you're not getting it. Uh -huh. So just find a difference between this and this and put it there. You said that the last balance should be zero. Before the balance be zero, whatever you say must be same. So 6,500. Uh -huh. Okay, now we are done. So now, tell me the finance cost. The finance cost for the first year is what? Okay. Sorry, let me take the final part again. Let's take the final part. The thing is like this. We are doing our calculation. We are going to write this one down. So what happened is this. We might get zero. So we must find interest on this. We get 481. You add. But if you add, you will not get 6,500. Now, the last year for advance, whatever you get and push it, it must be the same as the rental payment. So that you can get what there. The last everything must be zero here for advance. And before we can get zero, then we are paying 6,500 here. So that means the open balance should be the same as whatever we are paying. So it means 6,500. Okay. So if the open balance should be 6,500, then that means the closing balance must also be what? 6,500. So that, and then here the issue is if you find 8% on this, it might not give you. And after that, when you add, you get 6,500. So don't worry yourself to use the interest, the interest rate to find for the interest for the final year. Just find the difference between this and this and put it as what well the financial. I'll be getting. So this is an issue. If you need to put for eight one, you are not wrong. I'm not marking you down. You're not wrong. That's all you're not wrong. But it's also correct. So don't worry. Now let's go to the main. The final entry, number one, everybody should type the finance loss for me. So finance loss for the first year is what? 1722. So let's go and put it in. The PNL that we provide, the finance loss 1722. 1722, average. 1722. Let's go to year two, one, three, for the and in that order, we are three nine two seven. So, can you put it in the two format that I provided? Now, let me go to the heartbeat. This one, everybody will do it for me. Kindly calculate if you're watching, can you pause the video before you continue? What happened is this tell me, year one, tell me, number one, the total liability, number two, tell me the non current liability. All this is for year one. Tell me the total liability. Tell me the non current liability. Meaning, straight it. But the first requirement, you are telling me the total liability. Second requirement, you are telling me the non current liability. Third one, you are telling me the current liability. You are splitting it for me. So let's see. I pick everybody's answer okay. based on the rule that we did. Now, let's see something. For the year one, total liability is equal to. Two three two five zero agreed. That's the total liability, which need to be split into what two non current and what parent to get a non current. Please let's follow the rule. Rule number, rule number one it says that go to the next year, the balance left after the last repayment. This one, this red pen to write it. Or oh, underline the left, the left, circle the left. Good. 
So go to next year. So I'm here. Next year when? Year two. What is the balance left after the last repayment? So if I check the balance left after the last repayment, this one, it is not the closing balance. It is you pick the closing balance. There's a difference between balance left after the last repayment and what the closing balance. This is the closing balance. It was coincident that in the RS, the closing balance and the balance left after that supplement are the same figure. But in advance, there is another that. Mm -hmm. So go to the next year, the balance left after the last repayment. So the repayment, get here, right? What the balance left? 16,750. So here, okay, liability is equal to, okay, liability is 16,750. So total liability is equal to 23,250. Then our okay, liability is equal to 16,750. When I take this one off from the total liability, it must give me what? The current liability. What the current liability? And that answer is very common. Let me give you some shortcut and some secrets. In advance, always if the years are not struggling, the current liability is the same as what? The rental payment. The rental payment. So take notes. In, in advance. So if there's another give you advanced question, as a result of this, this issue, that's why we like advance. Because no matter what, most often we might pick the closing balance as what well, the balance left after the last repayment. It's totally wrong. So most examiners like this. No matter the first time after the higher prices. So now, as a result of this, most examiners like the advance. So can we take note of it? So that is the year one. Let's go to year two. I look for all the years. So this is year one. Now let's go to year two. Year two, what is the total liability? So year two, okay, so both friends are in person, person. With the help of this, tell me year two. So year two, tell me one, total liability, non-current and current. Let's see something. Good. So if I get to year two, total liability will be 18,090. Non-current liability, year two, go to the next year. The balance left after the last repayment. So that would be what? 11,590. If I take this one off, I'll still get 6,500. So in short, it will be 6,500, 6,500 for all the five years period. That is all. Then you want yourself to do the calculation. Again, but except for the years struggle and so. For the purpose of this question, you need only the first and second year. Please, and please again. You need only the first and second year because the number is requesting for what? The first year treatment. Because of the non-care liability portion, you need an extra year. That's all. Mm -hmm. So the number is asking for, let's say, treatment in year two. You need year two and year what? Three. The number is asking for the treatment in year four. You need year four and year five. That's all. Okay. So basically, that is the end of the first section. So now we are done with the first section of leases. That's lease accounting. So far, what we've done is on lease accounting. Though there are so many types of the how to cover the interest. The interest use the actual method. Then there's some of the other gates. So probably our next meeting will look at the other issues. Good. That's the end of the game. If you have any question, kindly ask. If there's no question, then this is how far the good Lord will bring us. Good. Now take this question and then work on it for me. Very interesting. I like that question. But that was the question I intend to solve first. But I have to solve from there. Start from the basic before and now go up. Okay, so now let's try. Can you take this question as a trial work? So you're going to prepare the accounting entry. So this is the question. Can you try that question for me? And let's see how best you look at this. Very important. Try the question for me once. 
also upload on our platforms. Can you try this question for me? And you have to about this question. It is one of the challenging examples. Okay, so let me quickly upload it on our page and send it to everyone individually. So where's the where 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 Okay, so I think it's in trend online. Let me share it here. I really like the question. So let me share it. Another we are done for today. Thank you very much for coming and kindly subscribe to the page if I've not done that. Subscribe.